Welcome to the Church of New Beginnings weekly broadcast. We are so thankful and grateful that you have tuned in to be a part of this broadcast. And uh, we just can't say thank you enough. Um, and today we're going to get into the word of God. And we, again, we just want to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We thank you for tuning in to our Bible study and um uh, uh, on Wednesday nights at seven o'clock, and and thank you for being a part of this uh, service today. Um, for this nine thirty hour service, we, we we're just grateful and thankful that that you tune in and um, and everything. So let's go to uh, the Word of God. Um, we're going to to look at today. A very familiar passage of scripture found in the book of St. John chapter 21, starting around verse number uh, one. And we um, want you to look at um, the whole entire um, chapter 21, but we're going to just pull up a few verses out of chapter 21 and verses uh, through one through 14. We're not going to read all of those. I just want to pull up a couple of verses, and, and uh, again, I will be reading out of the International Children's Bible. It says, later, Jesus showed himself to the followers by, by Lake Galilee. This is how it happened. Some of the followers were together. They were Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Canaan in Galilee, the two sons of Zebedee, and two other followers. Simon Peter said, I'm going out to fish. The other follow followers said, we will go with you. So they went out and got into the boat and they fished that night, but caught nothing. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the followers did not know that it was Jesus. Then he said to them, friends, have you caught any fish? And they answered, no. He said, throw your net into the water on the right side of the boat, and you will find some. So they did this. They caught so many fish that they could not pull the net back into the boat. The follower whom Jesus loved said to Peter, it is the Lord. And when Peter heard him say this, he wrapped his coat around himself. Peter had taken his clothes off. Then he jumped into the water. The other followers went to the shore in the boat and dragged the net of fishes. They were not very far from shore, about a hundred yards. And when the followers stepped out of the boat onto the shore, they saw five coals and there were fish on the fire and there was bread. I'm going to stop there and uh, talk today from the subject, Jesus knows where you are. Jesus knows where you are. Well, as I was preparing to uh, preach this message today, um, I was doing some research and I have discovered that there seems to be some discussion by Bible scholars as to whether or not chapter 21 was really a part of the original manuscript in which John is accredited to writing. But after looking and researching, um, it is believed by some that the way in which chapter 21 describes the things that happened to Peter and and reconcile him back to Jesus Christ, it seems like the manuscript that they finally looked at, the original ma manuscript, has the evidence in it to show that it was actually John who wrote this passage of scripture. Some believed uh, that it was written by somebody else and just later just kind of combined with the other chapters one through 20. But as you look at this, um, it is kind of easy to decide um, that chapter 21 does 
uh, along with the first 20 chapters of the book of John. Um, so as, I, as I'm thinking about here, uh, I guess that's what Bible scholars do. They discuss and decide and, and, and you know, think about whether or not this fits or that fits or, or whatever. But um, I want to um, just kind of look at this in a way um, that's kind of uh, interesting to think about where we are. This is after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and we see in the early part of this chapter that Peter says, I'm going fishing. I am going fishing. And the other six or so disciples said, I want to go fishing with you, Peter. I, we are going to. Now, it's interesting that we need to ask the question at this point. Why is it that they would go back to what Jesus had already brought them out of for three years? Basically, they had not been in the fishing business. So why at this point in their lives would they go back to something uh, that Jesus had brought them out of? Let me just kind of look at this in, 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 a, in this way. Uh, I know very few pastors that have left a church <laughs> that have went back to the church. In other words, uh, specifically in the Baptist church where they call pastors. Uh, I can think of one right offhand, um, but I won't use his name. But he was the pastor of this church at, for some period of time. He left and then another pastor came in or maybe two came back in and then he came back to pass to the same church. I don't find that being real common uh, in the Baptist church, um, but it does happen. But why would these disciples, y'all, come back to an industry that they had left? They were able to do without this for three long years, but now they find themselves going back to an industry they thought they had left. Now, why do you think that happened, Sadler? Well, let me suppose to you that they had been on some what I call a roller coaster ride, okay? Um, about a week ago, two weeks ago, they had experienced Jesus entering to the city of Jerusalem. And y'all remember how they were spreading down palm leaves and their coats and everything. So they were on a jubilant high. They were really excited about how they were um, experiencing this moment. And only about five days later, this high that they had, and I don't mean on drugs, but this spiritual high of seeing Jesus being honored came to a screeching halt. Jesus was crucified on that Friday. Their emotions went from a high to a low. But then about a week ago, early Sunday morning, Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Bible scholars seem to indicate and to agree on this, that this was probably the third appearance that Jesus had made uh, to the disciples and, and, and what have you. So maybe y'all just maybe that this fishing trip was just what the doc doctor would have ordered. Having gone through all of those up and down emotions, those highs and those lows, maybe just maybe going back fishing to something that they were comfortable with, something that was um, something they had done before and something they had made a living doing. They, they were comfortable doing this. And sometimes I find that when we are going through emotions or uh, emotional trauma, we will go to a place where we feel comfortable. I know of somebody not long ago that had some tragedy in their family. 
And after the tragedy happened, they went home to the parents' house. Why did they go there? Because they felt that there was comfort there. Um, the parents was there and the parents could comfort them and, um, and, and make them feel better during this trying time. Did it, did it eliminate the situation? No. Did it go away? No, it was not gone away. But nevertheless, they were able to deal with the situation because they had their parents there to embrace them. So perhaps that was what was going on with the disciples. What else was they going to do? You know, uh, they had gone through these emotions, and I'm sure that they were still dealing with the emotions of the highs and the lows. And they knew Jesus was resurrected, but specifically Peter was probably still dealing with something. And that issue was the fact that he had denied Jesus. And y'all remember when they was in the upper room, the large upper room, you remember when they celebrated Passover and he and Jesus instituted something we call the Last Supper or communion. Peter in that room said that he would follow Jesus wherever he went, whether he went to prison, if he died, he would do that. And y'all know what happened. You know what the story says that Jesus told Peter, he said, before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. So Peter now knows Jesus is alive. But I just believe in my mind, y'all, that Peter was probably still dealing with this. This was still in his mind that, man, I denied the Lord Jesus. I said I didn't know him. And I'm sure that maybe James and John and, and Thomas and Bartholomew and, and the rest of them probably said, well, Peter, you got to get over this. You got to get on with your life, Peter. Jesus is alive. Just put that behind you. But I would imagine in my mind, deep down inside, no matter how much they said to him, he was probably still wrestling with that. So, in this chapter, we see what was going on. And these disciples had gone out fishing. But the Bible says in this 21st chapter, they had gone fishing at night and um, they didn't catch not one thing. Isn't it amazing how the Lord Jesus Christ allows us to go through some things and, and we feel like it's for nothing. We did this and we still came up short. Well, the first point I want to point out here today that I saw in this chapter 21 of the book of St. John, Jesus finds his sheep. Somebody write that in the comments for me. Jesus finds his sheep. The disciples went fishing because Peter said, I'm going fishing. Uh, the other agreed to go with him. Now, here's the thing in the text. Five of the disciples are identified. Now, follow me here. Uh, five of the disciples are identified. Here's Simon Peter, here's Thomas, here's Nathaniel, James and John, because when you see the text says the sons of Zebedee's, is talking about his sons, James and John. Now, y'all, anybody who has followed me for any amount of time, y'all know that one of my favorite disciples is Andrew. Andrew. Sally, why you like Andrew? Y'all remember uh, the day that, that Jesus had 5,000 men, not counting the women and the children, and uh, and um, the other disciples was talking about, we, we ain't got enough food, we ain't got enough money to feed these this uh, group of folk. And, um, and it was Andrew, my boy Andrew. He went out and found a little boy who had five barley loaves of bread and two small fish. Two small fishes, I believe it said. Andrew while everybody was somewhat complaining about what they don't have. Oh, yes. My boy, Andrew. Yes, he did, y'all. 
he went out and found a little boy with five barley loaves of bread, which meant that he that he came from a poor family because the, um, the bread was barley and that was rough bread and two small fish. Okay, I, this is not what the message is about, but I, I got to throw some 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 accolades into my boy, Andrew. Andrew was never out front. Andrew was never kind of recognized. Every time they mentioned his scripture, the name in scripture pretty much, they would say the, the brother of Peter. He couldn't have his, he couldn't stand alone. He couldn't just say, well, Andrew. No, they, the Bible said the brother of Simon Peter. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's what they always did. But, you know, it didn't seem to mind. But, y'all, I, I, I was a little disappointed. Yeah, I was a little disappointed that, that Andrew, he was the older brother, I believe, uh, of Peter. And um, <laughs> John, oh, my goodness, John, how could you not mention Andrew? No, he didn't mention him, y'all. By name. But then the Bible says that there were two others. So I guess there was all together, there were seven, seven disciples at this point in time. They had fished all night. They had fished all night and they had caught nothing, nothing. They had fished all night and, and caught nothing. So the first point I just told you about was well, Jesus finds his, his sheep. So in other words, don't worry. Jesus knows exactly where you are. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. And, and it's interesting how he finds his sheep. He knows exactly where they are. Know where they are. They know where they are. Know where they are. I, I, I want to throw this story in real quickly. Uh, I don't know whether it really fits here or not, but I, I want to do it. I got a call the other day and um, somebody was telling me I need to contact somebody, another pastor who was who was local. Um, and um, and I, he sent me his um, contact information. And when I saw the contact information, the person name looked like um, somebody that I had met before. So before I added it to my contacts, I did a search in my contacts to see if I had that person's name in there. And I did. I found out that I had met this person uh, in 2008 at a quick trip. Those of y'all that live in Georgia, y'all know what quick trip is. And it was on Salem Road. I, 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 cause I make, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of peculiar like that. I make notes in my phone when I, when I, uh, when I meet somebody. I put the date in which I met them, where I met them, and all of that. So if I come back to that name sometime later on. Uh, I'll have some idea that I met the person, but this this person was wanting me to meet this guy, and and I'm saying, Lord, you allowed me to meet this guy in 2008. I don't know, I can't even remember whether we even talked again uh, since that time we met, but here it is in 2021. Okay, what is that about 13 years? So. God was strategically putting him in my life 13 years ago to use him to help me with a project 13 years later. All right. Then the first point was Jesus finds his sheep. Secondly, Jesus feeds his servant. Jesus feeds his servant. Jesus sees the disciples and he asked them if they uh, had uh, any fish and they say no. Jesus instruct them now. He said, look, what I want you to do, I want you to take your nets and I want you to drop them on the right side of the boat. Now, I got to throw this little bit of thing in here um, because uh, um, I've got a a deacon friend over at my home church, Peace Chapel Baptist Church, by the name of Deacon Willie Benton. Everybody call him Red. Everybody call him Red. Uh, he is a fisherman. And he told me several years ago, said, if you want to catch a specific kind of fish, he would tell me 
what kind of hooks you need, what kind of bait you need to put on there. But look what they do. They do not use a hook. They use a net. Now, Sally, why is that? Why are you bringing that up? What's the big deal about the difference? You're just catching fish. I believe the difference is when you fish with a hook, and by the way, I'm not a fisherman, you're looking for a specific type of fish. But when you drop a net down, you get all kind of fish. You can't be selective in terms of what you pull up in uh, that fish. Now, if you want to go fishing for mullets, you're going to use one kind of uh, hook and, and bait. And if you want to do something with minerals or catfish and all of that kind of stuff, you're going to have to use a specific kind of uh, bait to catch them and, and different kinds of hooks in order to, to bring them in. But he tells them to, sh to throw their nets on the right side of the boat. Now, I don't know why he picked the right side. I don't know why he didn't say the left side. But really, in reality, I guess the reason why he picked the right side, because he knew that Jesus knew the fish was on the right side. Yeah, come on, somebody. So they dropped the net on the right side. Now, they don't recognize that this is Jesus. And, and, and I can understand that. I, you know, they, I don't know what, you know what Jesus looked like, but they at first did not recognize it was Jesus. You know, kind of like we're doing now in 2021, April 2021. What are we doing? We Everybody walking around with a mask on and putting a mask on the face. And, and most of the time I see people and I can't even recognize who they are because, you know, they wear a mask on their face and everything. And then and, and, and uh, you, you see them, they speaking to you, they recognize you, but you don't you don't recognize who they are and, and, and none of that stuff and everything. And, and let me just kind of demonstrate here for a second. Yeah, look, one of my members made this mask for me, and I'm gonna give them some uh blocks here. Now look at the difference. I got the mask on, take it off. Now you know who I am. Okay. Now, um here's another thing that 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 caught my attention. These are professional fishermen. They know how to fish. They've been fishing for years. Yeah, they've been away. They took a break for about three years. But the thing that really is amazing here is normally um, professional fishermen do not take advice from just anybody. So here the stranger is. They don't know who he is. And he's telling them to take their nets and throw them off on the right side. Now, the Bible does not say this, but I'm just going to use my imagination here when I think about this. Uh, because in Luke chapter 5, uh, there was a similar situation where they were cleaning their nets. They had been out fishing all night and hadn't caught nothing. So this is, you know, another time that Jesus and hooked up with these fellas and they ain't they been fishing and they ain't caught nothing. Okay? Now, in Luke chapter 5, it tells us that they were washing the nets and cleaning the nets. Well, in this particular text, it does not tell us whether or not they were cleaning their nets or not. But what I believe that was going on was they probably had not cleaned the nets. So, uh, because in, in Luke chapter 5, uh, 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 Peter really didn't believe uh, that, that, you know, that it was really going to work. But he sent them way back out in the sea where they had come from. But, uh, but And Peter said, well, Lord, uh, uh, I'm going to drop down the net. In other words, I'm going to drop down one. Jesus told you to drop down multiple nets. But in this case, he said drop them down. Okay. So they catch a multitude of fish. And one text says they were great fish. Some said large fish. But John, the, the beloved disciple, Y'all remember what he did on, on, on Good Friday. He was the one that Jesus said, behold your mother, mother, behold your son. In other words, he turned the responsibility of the care of his mother Mary over to John. This is the same John. John has to tell Peter. And I think maybe in reality, John might have been the youngest one of the group. May have. I don't know. I know he was younger. Okay. Because on the day of, of resurrection, <laughs> He was so young, he could outrun Peter. So I know you're younger than Peter, okay? And John says, Peter, this is Jesus. All right? Some say that this was the third time 
that they had encountered an appearance of Jesus Christ. So when Pete, Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic. Now, here's another discussion that Bible scholars have, uh, scholars have said. Some have said that he was dressed in his underwear. Some have said that he was new, okay? But what the point was, he was not fully dressed at this time, okay? Uh, he was stripped down or whatever. The other disciples came to shore in the boat, for it is believed that they were probably only about 100 yards from the shore, and they were dragging the net full of fishes, okay? Now, let me just kind of pause long enough to tell you that 100 yards is the length of a football field. So they drug those fishes, those great fish, to the seashore, all right? And the Bible says they drug different, or uh, they drug a net full of fishes, F-I-S-H-E-S. -S. And what that means is, it means that uh, there were different kinds of fish. And when they had reached the land, they saw a charcoal fire set there and fish on it and they had bread. Mm, 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 mm. It would be like somebody, you go to somebody's house and they already got a grill hot and they got the fish on it and they got the bread to eat and everything. And that, that, that made me think about some years ago, one of my nieces uh, was having a going away party for her husband's uh, aunt. Her husband and aunt was going back uh, to Africa. Uh, I don't remember what part of Africa it was, but she was going back. So they was having this big celebration. So they invited us up, Co Pastor Gene and I, up to uh, to the the cookout and what have you. Well, this aunt had a grill, and she had seasoned this tilapia, and she put the tilapia on the grill. Okay, and then when it got ready for us to eat, I took my plate to the grill to get my tilapia. It was some of the best, might have been the best fish I have ever tasted. But before I tasted the fish, I had a problem with the looks of the fish. Okay. Now, Sally, what, what, what did the fish look like? The fish still had its head on it. And I have never eaten fish head. So she asked me, or I, I asked her, can you please <laughs> take the head off the fish? <laughs> she kept telling me, this is the best part, uh, the, the, the head. I have never in my life, even my, when I was a kid growing up, my grandfather sold fish, got him in every Thursday. But I never, I have never eaten a head off of a fish. Now, I know somebody out there laughing at me. Uh, maybe y'all saying, well, Sally, you don't know what you're missing. No, I don't. I really don't know what I'm missing. But I'm going to tell you one thing. She took that head off. And Sattler towed that fish up. That was some of the best or the best fish I had ever eaten. It was seasoned just perfectly. Okay. And uh, so Jesus um, bring some of the fish, he said, that you caught. Okay. He said, bring some of the fish that you have. Bring it on uh, to shore. Bring it on up here so, you know, I can have it too. I guess maybe they ate some. But now... The Bible says here in chapter 21 that there was a specific number. Now, in Luke chapter 5, it did not give us a number of how many fish there were. In John chapter 21, he cites, y'all, that there was 153 fishes. Now, Y'all know I am. I got excited about that. Why did John give us an exact number? And when Luke did it, he just said it was a multitude and, and the nets began to break and all that kind of stuff. These nets were full. 
but they were big, huge, humongous, 153 fish. Now, why, y'all, is the 153 so significant? Okay, let me let, let me tell some of y'all, uh, y'all church folks that watch it. Okay, let, let, let me say this. I, I, I got to throw this in, got to throw this in. I'm not telling you to go play cash three and, and put and, and, and use 153. Y'all hear me? I'm not talking about that. I'm not trying to give you no number to go out and play. I'm not telling you to go play cash three and use 153. All right? But let me tell you this, though. Just in case you do and don't do what I'm saying and you win, don't forget the tie to Church of New Beginnings. All right? Uh, you know, come on, y'all. Like, uh, uh, okay, that'd be what about uh, fifteen dollars and thirty cent. Y'all, y'all can send that fifteen dollars and thirty cent. There. If uh, no, I don't know how much it'll be. To be honest, I because I don't play. Y'all see, I don't know nothing about it. Well, whatever you get, you know, uh, if you win, send your tie from that to Church of New Begin. Now, y'all, I'm just having a little fun here. I'm just having a little fun. Uh, 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 uh. But the hundred and fifty three fish, it is believed, it represents the number of species of fish. In other words, it represents that there are approximately 153 different kinds of fish. Oh, Lord have mercy. Now, when I was a kid growing up, I told you my granddaddy sold fish. He sold mullet and Kroger. And I don't know, I guess I was an adult before I realized there were some other fish besides um, uh Kroger and mullet. Now, I don't, you know, mullet is okay. You know, most of the people who serve mullet, they don't, I know back in the day they didn't do it. They didn't fillet it. You had to eat them fish with all them bones and pick them and all that kind of stuff. So, 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 so another little thing I want to throw here right quick, right here. Um, somebody told me years ago, he said, uh, eat the fish and spit out the bone. So maybe if you can't use this right now, just take what you can, eat the fish, spit out the bone. But look at all of the other different kind of fish. You know, there's catfish, uh, there's perch, there's tilapia, um, all kind of different fish. I won't go through all of them. But it is believed that there's 153 fishes that they caught was the different species of the fish. All right. First of all, we told you that Jesus finds his shepherd or his sheep. The second thing we told you that Jesus feeds his servants. All right. Now, when I, when I told y'all earlier, I said these rascals went uh, fishing. And I just got to tell you, Jesus wasn't with them. They had to eat somehow. So they went fishing. All right. The third point. All right. First point was what? Jesus feeds his sheep. Always remember that. Jesus feeds his sheep. So if you want his sheep, you're going to get fed. And then not only that, but he serves his servants. He finds them and then he feeds them. He serves them. He already got the food ready when they come on. Well, the last point I want to make, Jesus fellowships with, the, with his saints. Okay? Uh, now, why do you think that Jesus would do this? Why would he fellowship with them? Why would he feed them? One of the things I believe the reason why he's doing that is because he wanted them to know that he's alive and well. A spirit, <clears throat> excuse me, a spirit cannot feed you. A spirit cannot cook for you. A spirit cannot serve meals to you. But this is what Jesus does. He proves to them that I'm alive and well. Oh, thank God he's alive and he's well. Oh, I just want to remind you again this Sunday that, that the tomb is empty and the cross is empty. Well, as I go to my seat, y'all, let me remind you, as I told you earlier, the chapter 21, 
I believe was here for Peter. I, I, I believe it was not only here for Peter, but I believe that it was here for you and I. So what I'm trying to tell you as I go away this Sunday, I want to tell you that uh, Peter had messed up. Just like all of us have messed up some point in our lives. You know, Romans 3 and 23 said, For all uh, have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I don't care who you are. Huh? We've all uh, messed up. Huh? But y'all remember huh, when they were in the upper room, y'all? Huh? Y'all remember huh, what Peter was saying? Lord, uh, I'll go to prison with you. Lord, uh, I will die with you. Huh? And then huh, they were in the garden uh, of Gethsemane. Huh? Somebody know what I'm talking about here. And Jesus uh, say, stay here and pray. Huh? while uh, I go yonder and pray. Uh, but y'all know the story. Uh, they fell asleep. Uh, Jesus came back uh, the third time. Uh, and then finally he said, uh, sleep on uh, and get your rest. Uh, by this time, uh, the mob crowd uh, had a assembled y'all uh, in the garden of Gethsemane. Uh, and they uh, were coming to take Jesus. Well, well Peter got up uh, uh, woke up out of his sleep uh, and he cut one of the soldiers ear off uh, and Jesus, y'all don't know who he is don't you, uh, told Peter to, to put up his sword uh, before Jesus good God almighty, uh, before Jesus uh, would let them take him, uh, he reached down, uh, grabbed the soldier's ear, uh, put it back on his head. Uh, can I get a witness? Uh, Jesus did healing uh, before he went to the cross. Uh, but while uh, they were taking him uh, from one court place uh, to another, uh, oh, Satan, I mean, not Satan. Uh, yeah, Satan was involved in it. Uh, but Simon Peter, yes, Lord, uh, was following Jesus from a distance. Uh, and after a while, uh, somebody said to Simon, uh, you look like uh, one of the followers of Jesus. Uh, and, and Simon Peter said, no, uh, I don't know him. And then y'all, uh, he was warm in his hands. Uh, he was warm in his body. Uh, somebody else came and told him, uh, you talk like them. Uh, you act like one of the Galileans. Uh, you got to be a follower of Jesus. Uh, but Jesus said, I mean, Peter said, I don't know Jesus. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, they said there was a young girl uh, that told Peter uh, that he acted like her. Uh, he was a follower of Jesus. Uh, and Peter said, no, uh, I don't know the man. Uh, and by this time, y'all, mm, Peter was mad. Uh, oh, yes, he was all upset. Uh, he was tired uh, because uh, by this time uh, he heard the cock crow. Uh, and I can believe uh, that Peter was beginning uh, to get upset with the folk. Uh, he began to say in my mind, uh, you going to make me uh, act a fool up in here. You gonna make me lose my mind. Can I get a witness? But then Peter heard the cock crow. Now why did Jesus let that cock crow? He already done said it. He told Peter that. But not only that, my brother and sister, I know the scriptures will be in fulfilled. But I want to point out to you right now. Maybe Jesus wanted Peter to know because the cock had crowed. It was a brand new day. What you did yesterday is all gone. Today, help me somebody. Today is a brand new day.
Can I get a witness here? Can I get some thumbs up to know that today is a brand new day? Whatever happened yesterday, and some good things may have happened yesterday, some bad things may have happened yesterday, but today is a brand new day. Today is a day uh, that we can see how good God is going to be today. What did he say, Psalm 119 and 24? This is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Can I get some witnesses in here? Can anybody help me today? Uh, say, this is the day that the Lord has made. But on this day, that's in chapter 21, after Jesus tell him how to catch the fish, after Jesus tell him where to catch the fish, he told him to, to, catch, to go on the right side. And normally, the big catches were done at night, but this is early in the morning. Then after he fed them, or oh, have mercy, or oh, then he wanted to deal with the issue that Peter had. I told y'all in the early part of this message that Peter probably was down and out. So Jesus asked him three questions, or three times he asked him, Peter, do you love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, feed my land. And then he asked him a second time, Peter, does thou love me? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, feed my sheep. And then he asked him a third time. And I know Peter was probably getting irritated by now. I done told you two times that I love you. How many more times I got to tell you that I love you? And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. He said, well, feed my sheep. Now, I believe, y'all, this is Sattler. Come out of the book of Sattler, chapter 5, verse 23. I believe the reason why he asked him three times, did he love him? Because he had denied him three times. And Jesus wanted to make sure from this day forth that Peter had no doubt in his mind, y'all, that he was forgiven and that Jesus loved him too. And Jesus wanted him to go about doing the business that he had called him to do. He said, I'm going to make you fishing them in. And I believe that's what Jesus wanted to do, was get Peter's head straight. So Peter would go out and began to become a fisherman of men. If that's you today, come on, just be about the Lord's business. We need to be trying to bring others into the body of Christ. Somebody ought to say amen right there. But I want to take this opportunity. If right now you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, I want you to ask the Lord to forgive you of all your sin. And say, Lord, I believe. Not somebody else saying it, but you say it. Lord, I believe. That you are the Son of God. And I believe that God has raised you from the dead. I know I say this all the time. Jesus has gone away, but he's coming back. Whenever God tells him, it's time to come back. There are a lot of different people who believe that because we're in this pandemic situation, that these are the last days. But I'm going to tell you, the last days have been around ever since Jesus left going back to glory. We've been in the last days. All I'm trying to do is to, to get somebody that has not accepted Jesus Christ as a personal savior to accept him today. And then if you already have, maybe you backslidden, I want to encourage you today that Jesus knows exactly where you are. Don't think whatever you've done is so bad that Jesus it's taken you off the radar and you don't know where. He doesn't know where you are. He knows exactly where you are. He knows today, y'all. He knows exactly where you are. I pray and trust that this word has been an encouragement to you. That's all I'm trying to do is just encourage you to love the Lord, come back to the Lord, if you have gone astray or accept him as your personal savior.
Again, I want to thank all of you for taking time to listen to this message today. And I want you to share it with somebody. Maybe there's somebody you know that need to be encouraged to let them know that Jesus knows where they are. Whoever you are, Jesus knows exactly where you are. Let me close with my parting thought. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May you have the peace, that unconditional peace, that only the Lord Jesus Christ can give you. And as I sit here today and talk to you, I want to just tell you that the Lord is so powerful. Just some of the things that I've seen in the last few days, what the Lord has done in my life and in the life of our church. I know God can do it for you just like he's doing it for us. The Lord has been a blessing to us and the Lord is still blessing us right now, right now. I love you. Church of New Beginning loves you. And there's nothing you can do about it. God bless you and may heaven smile upon you. And don't forget on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, tune in to our weekly Bible study. Amen. I love you. And there's nothing you can do about it. Peace.